Are you ready for the boat trip? Hey, Steph. Did you guys like the spell checker? Thank you. We'll talk more about that later. Since you don't want to watch me type for an hour, we put canned messages in there. We'll try hard to pull them out before we launch. I click done. It asks me for more users. I'll add Stephanie. And since she is offline, I'm going to go stare at a blank page. So I will open Wave. And you'll see in my search panel, the middle panel, there'll be an unread message from Lars. He's asking me if I want to go shopping uh, before this boat trip, so I'll do something very email-like, which is hit reply, and say, I love <laughs> shopping. I wrote the script. I need <laughs> new fins. Let's go. The first benefit I want to show you of this being a hosted conversation is it's easier to keep track of structure. If this was email and I wanted to reply to the middle part of Lars's message where he asked which bus to take, I would hit reply, the email client would copy the message, and I'd hand edit in the response. Because this is a hosted conversation and it lives in one place, I can just instruct the server to split the message apart and say, you never wake up early, which is true. Let's take the late bus. OK, Lars is in online. I'm going to close this wave. So a little bit later, I come back online. And you'll see, for starters, that that wave is now bold to show me there's new material in it. When I open it up, Stephanie's first message gets the highlight. And I can navigate the conversation with my keyboard and, of course, continue her thread here. You know me too well, like that. And that's how plain vanilla email type conversations work in Wave. You can also do instant messaging type conversations in Wave. In fact, in the same Wave, you can switch back and forth between these different ways of communicating. I'll show you that now. Shiny, you must know a good store. Right. There is a new one over on George Street. Cool. Let's go at 7. Sounds good. Let's invite Jens, too. OK. So you notice that we didn't wait for me to hit done before showing Stephanie the message. But rather, and this was difficult to do, we transmit live almost character by character what I'm typing. So we want, to, we want to add Jens to the conversation. If this was email, I would take the last message here, reply to it, and add Jens to the recipient list. There's two problems with that. For starters, because we branched the conversation up here, that last email message would not contain the entire conversation. But also, if Stephanie then later, when I reply to an earlier message of mine, Jens wouldn't get that anyway. You end up with these cat and mouse games. In the wave model, all you have to do is make Jens a participant in the wave like that. And now I'll switch over to Firefox here, where Jens is already signed in. <coughs> so now that I'm on the wave, um, I'm going to open it. And of course, everything is going to be marked as unread for me. Um, but because I was added late, I didn't get to see Lars's message in one piece. And by the time I'm added, they could be arbitrarily far apart. So we added a feature called playback. So I get to see Lars's original message. Lars asks Stephanie. Stephanie replies. <laughs> Stephanie does inline reply. Does a, and so on and so on. All right, so I'm going to add my reply. Me to don't forget your keys. Occasionally, you want to say something in a wave that's not visible to all the participants. We call that a private reply. And I'll add one down here at the bottom. And I'll say, let's buy Steph a really nice present. I wrote this part. And then I will add just Jens. And you will see, if I just quickly flip over to Jens's browser and scroll down, he sees that private reply. But if you look at Stephanie's screen, she doesn't see it. 